All right, we're trying this again. Hold up a minute. Okay. Maybe that's working now? Oh, I'm just at nine. Okay. Sorry about that. I was uh, trying to fix some issues. Uh, I think I got it. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But if you're noticing a change in my quality of the stream, I had to set it down to about 480. So it's not going to be great, but. If you do see it, then um, at least it's a good thing. Thank you for joining me. Oh, it looks like it's just my wife. <laughs> That's all right. Sometimes she watches while she's uh, doing her little arts and crafts shit. So, thank you, honey. here anymore.
was the foreboding music. Turn down the brightness that loves me. Distracted. We'll see. For now, I like a little bit more minimalist.
blood trail. We found one. They were attacked. No. Safer to brave the wilds than trust in our magic. We should have... I should have... We can't leave them like this. We have to take them home. What if we're only making it worse? Maybe we don't belong here, but neither do they. Not out here in the wind and the cold. I heard the story about Varus's voice from beyond the grave. Of course, I didn't believe it, but Licinia and her sister did. Perhaps there is something to the tale after all. I want to understand. So, oh, you had every reason not to trust us. We came as trespassers. Invaders. But I pray that in time, we will be more than that to you. That we will find a way to help your loved ones. And see that no more children are left to freeze alone in the snow.
Thank you for your report. We shall inform the troops of these developments and instruct them to proceed with the utmost caution should they encounter any survivors. Allow me to go and speak with the ones at the Victor's Spoils. They may be more willing to listen to a fellow Garlean and accept our offer of assistance. I pray you are right. And though I am loath to burden you any further, should there be an appropriate occasion to speak of Lacinia and her sister, please do so. I am sorry to have put you through this. My distress is nothing compared to their suffering. Yeah. So tell me, what else have we learned? As you may have already heard, we have succeeded in curing the members of the Popularis, Maxima identified. They have provided us with some intriguing insights into the current state of Garlemald. The assassination of Emperor Varus was the catalyst for the civil war. Nerva declared his claim to the throne, and his opponents refused to recognize it. Fighting broke out in the capital, where Nerva's third legion clashed with the first, who remained loyal to Varus even after his death. Of course, even Imperial warmongers would balk at the idea of turning their shining city into a battleground. Like burning down the wood to spite the wasps. Neither side would be so mad. Unless... something... or someone inflamed their animosity to such an extent that they could not help but act against their better judgment. It brings to mind events at the Gimlet Dark, does it not? The Emperor's sudden withdrawal from the front line, specifically. Nerva and his father, Titus, Varus's then political rival, took advantage of rumors that Crown Prince Zenos had been possessed by a demon. Elidibus. What better way to disparage your enemies than with the truth, or a close enough approximation? Indeed. But before their accusations could be substantiated, many of Titus's followers were silenced. While some were merely stripped of their status, others died under curious circumstances. One after another, suddenly and suspiciously. Again, Elidibus. Like as not, he had a hand in it. No evidence was found to implicate Varus, certainly. Nevertheless, Titus, Nerva, and the Third Legion would have judged it a brazen attempt by the Emperor to rid himself of his political enemies. And then, in the midst of this growing turmoil, Varus Soscalvis is murdered. And Garlemald's own prodigal son, Gaius van Belsar, is named the murderer. Shortly thereafter, Nerva claims the right of succession, and in response, the First Legion claims the assassination was part of a coup d'etat orchestrated by Titus and Nerva. So no one is at fault, and everyone else is to blame. I should add that both parties received substantial financial backing, presumably to provide them with the means and encouragement to pursue a swift victory and that these contributions came from the self-same benefactor. I'd heard House Brutus had been filling the Third Legion's coffers, but the first as well. It would seem so. Though the Popularis determined that the First Legion received funds from a variety of organizations, all had connections to House Brutus. So Fandaniel, in the guise of Arsahi, was playing both sides against each other the entire time. The information we gained from my friends does not end there. One night, shortly after fighting broke out, the capital was shaken by an immense tremor. From that point onward, they have no memories, no recollection of any events, including our clash on the Magna Glacius. But when asked about the Imperial Palace and its bizarre transformation, 
they somehow recall Emperor Varys giving them orders in their dreams. May the Tower of Babel stand as testament to the glory of Garlemald. This sounds awfully familiar. It does. We have something to show you all. <laughs> hey, Will. Varys spoke to them through this radio. Perhaps it was a recording, but if not, that would be inexplicable. We are of one mind, then. The ether that permeates the ore used in this device is almost identical to that of the talismans. I have to turn down my resolution terribly. It's like running at 480. So... Uh, it's kind of annoying. I see it. While it is likely more by coincidence than design, these devices might also ward against a primal's influence. A picture is beginning to form. If the tremor felt throughout Garlemald was a wave of ether emitted by a primal, then while those within range would have been tempered, those huddled around a radio desperate for news concerning the Civil War would have been spared. I'm doing all right. It's, uh, it's been a long day. Did a lot of chores, cleaning up. Um, actually, I'm starting to redo my man cave because Liz wants to game in here with me, so I don't have a man cave anymore. No, it's going to be like a uh, player one, player two situation. It's going to be cool. It's going to be great. No wonder Licinia kept it close. My friends, I must speak with you. A young man was caught trying to steal our supplies. He is a soldier of the Iron Men, we think, but one who has not been made thrall. How are you doing, Will? Thankfully, Magni restrained him before blood was spilled. The stranger is outside, if you wish to ask him questions. I think we do. Who do we have here? Garlians? Bro, I feel that it's... I wanted to take a, a good week off, but my boss needed somebody uh, handling all the people that I work with. And uh, I'm like, not a second in command. <laughs> I'm not even a right hand, but I'm trying to work my way there. But, uh, dude, I felt quite overworked this week, so. Shifts all month. Didn't know what to do with my summer day. Hey, I mean, at least you got to chill, right? It's rough. Traitors to your homeland! Have you no shame? I am Lucia Junius, a Temple Knight of Ishgard. And you are? Julius Pier Norbanus. And that's all you invaders will get from me. We are not here to invade Garlemald. Far from it. Like you, our allies in Eorzea and the Far East fight in defense of their lives and their loved ones even as we speak. But it is the people of Garlemald who have suffered most. This we know, and that is why we have come to offer you our aid, that we may unite against our common foe. Whether you believe me or not, those are the facts. Now, answer me this. 
Why would a proud soldier of the Empire be reduced to stealing? The situation must be dire indeed for you to go to such lengths. I knew something dumb and haven't decided what. Go to a strip club? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I do not encourage people to go out right now. I mean, it's freaking pandemic is still a little bit crazy, even though the mask mandate has been lifted in our area. I'm just... I'm not one to want to venture out right now still. But, uh... Hmm. Let me help you with that real quick. <laughs> what to do? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say, I mean, you, you do a lot of uh, building, so I'm trying for that. Doing a lot of uh, game from construction, but you're probably still waiting on parts. Uh, do a retro game speed run. <laughs> Ah, oh, <laughs> Not your thing. <laughs> if it is supplies you seek, we would gladly share ours, or turn a blind eye while you leave with your spoils. Actually, funny thing. I've lived in this area for... I'm not going to disclose where I live. Uh, lived here for almost... Eight years now? It'll, I think it'll be eight years this this year. But uh, I've not been to a strip club. <laughs> I will not negotiate. My commander will determine how to deal with you and yours. If you wish to treat with him, I will take you. But no more than three. I don't much like the sound of that. But if we do accept his proposal, I suggest the two of us and... Please allow me and Alize to act as envoys. May I ask why? We have seen with our own eyes the hardships the Guardians face. How their futures and lives hang in the balance. <laughs> You wanna go strip club with me? <laughs> we can go. My wife will have to come along too. <laughs> she doesn't mind. She thinks it's fair. <laughs> it's not the warmest invitation, but it's an opportunity to prove our intentions true. Maybe not a chance to make things right, but a chance to make them better. I can see that persuading you otherwise is a lost cause, but you will proceed with the utmost care. Yes, ma'am. Couple of children and what? A cell sword? Is this an insult? Not in the least. You will find that they are more than qualified to speak on our behalf. There are many dangers on the road ahead. I will need that back. Eh. 
I know some of those words. <laughs> I don't know a lot about cars, honestly. <laughs> Message that to me later. I'll let my I'll let Liz know. <laughs> we'll see about going. Pop that there, so I can hear myself a little bit better. I can hear myself talk. Kind of need to hear my own voice. <laughs> Second, I'm gonna try to just find here. Uh, gonna try that. Maybe this.
Will, by the way, am I sounding okay? Because I'm using a different mic, not the one on my headset. Oh, 3D printing. Nice. I've been wanting to get a 3D printer. I just don't know where it, what brand is good or like what price range I should be looking at for the smaller things I need to do. Sound good? Okay. Cool. Thank you. I kind of want to print like little, I don't know, what do you call it? Just little things. Um, like for one thing, like a phone stand. I have like this little design in mind. I, I tried to build one out of Legos and it worked out great. It's just uh, Legos are a little delicate sometimes and f flimsy so they break apart easy, easily. Resin printers do better with details, but I've printed tons of stands. There's a switch stand. Phone stand. Okay. I had thought about doing uh, little mini figurines. Um, yeah. I'd like to try for that. Cool.
Actually, I want to look that up real quick. Time out. <laughs> If it's like smaller um, type of projects, she and I would definitely be interested. In We're not looking to like create anything nuts. Like this one um, TikTok video I saw, some guy printed a life-size Master Chief, like piece by piece, and it was nuts. <laughs> it was like almost up to his ceiling, and I was just like in awe of like how like many pieces he had to like stick together and like he really thought it out and, and how much oh my god how much resin he used it it was ridiculous but really rather impressive yeah i'm down for that cool that's another thing too if i like plan it out i can print like larger projects piece by piece and like you know glue them together Nice. Cool. Yeah, I will keep you posted about that because I definitely want one. Thank you. Oh, you have two. One is regular, one is extended. Hmm. Is it better to have multiples? <laughs> I guess if you're like doing a, a bigger project or multiples. Um, Projects. It's good to have like multiple printers going on at once. <laughs> the thing that intimidates me is design. Like, what uh, programs do you use? Or do you just like look through uh, already prefabricated projects?
Okay, it's easy to use and I'm not so intimidated. <laughs> takes food to file and to Chico, which is the language the printer sends, is cure for that. Also free and does what it needs to. Oh, nice. So I don't need to invest in like really expensive programs. <laughs> which I'm sure if like you were gonna be like creating like monstrosities of projects, then you probably need more higher end software. But for the little projects I intend to do, yeah, I, I, I don't need anything too complex in design language. These are their chosen representatives. Very well. Let us hear what they have to say. Yes, sir. I present to you our commander, Lord Quintus Van Kena, Legatus of the First Legion. The First? I had no idea you had survived. We lost our Emperor, our city, more than half our troops. For my wounds, I may never take the field again. But we survived, I. In a manner much to your liking, I dare say. We have no intention of adding to your misfortunes, nor do we bear you any ill will. I'm wondering, cuz... Hmm, well, this would depend. Uh, I've always wanted to 3D print my own Power Ranger helmet. Ranger one, but definitely want to print my own. <laughs> Spare me. Though you children may speak in earnest, overtures of peace ever ring hollow in my ears. So long as man stands to profit from his neighbor's suffering, war is inevitable. Driven from our ancestral homeland into this blasted waste. Yet still you yearned to rob us of our paltry scraps. It was only with Magitek that you learned to keep your distance. Though we knew it was only a matter of time before you regrouped and returned. 
conquest and empire were our only defenses. Emperors Solus and Varys understood this, and through their campaigns saw us grow and prosper. Much blood has been spilled in Garlemald's name, aye, but if it is a choice between yours and mine, then it is hardly a choice at all. I do not deny that a great many conflicts throughout history were driven by the desire or necessity to gain by another's loss. That is not why we are here. Nor have we come to petition your aid in the war with the Telophoroi, grave though that threat may be. Our purpose is simply this. We wish to help you. Let us help you. If there is aught that can be done to ease your plight, we would be glad to do it. Perhaps you would. But regardless of the ideals you espouse, your leaders would not send an army into Garlemald if they did not stand to benefit. If we accept their aid, they will expect their efforts to be rewarded once the Telophoroi are no longer a threat. And after compensation and concessions, the great empire would be brought to heel. Her enemies rejoice at her downfall. Our third eye, a mark of shame. We won't stand idly by and let your people be humiliated. And we're not alone in that. We only want to make a difference, to make this world of ours better. Surely you can understand that. What I'm trying to say is, there are so, so many people who just don't care about making you suffer. And maybe that's almost insulting after all the suffering you feel the world has subjected your people to, but... Believe it or not, that's the truth. And now we're here, and all we're asking is for you to tell us what you want, what you hope for. So much blood has been shed, so much lost, all because of this endless war. Who wouldn't want to end it? Can we not work together to face our problems as one? Answer me this, young peacemakers. If a world without conflict is your desire, why reject the unity and prosperity of Garlemald? Is it because we do not share your faith? That we do not share your heritage? That our ideals and virtues differ? That we cherish and hold in the highest that which you do not? Disparity is the root of discord and peace built on compromise is flawed and fleeting. Happiness for one and all is a dream, and the reality is that to the victor go the spoils. That is why we Garlians will never submit nor surrender. For freedom and for pride, we will remain true to ourselves until the bitter end. That is my hope. It seems there is nothing more to say on the matter. You will remain here while I decide what is to be done with you. Do not be alarmed. No harm will come to you if you cooperate. I will take that in good faith considering that you just all drew your weapons on me. This is bullshit. We will not resist. However, as your guests, I ask that we be allowed to speak with the other members of your group. As you wish. I had no intention of locking you up. As by dawn you would be frozen stiff and you're no good to me dead. You are free to move about the encampment. But there is one condition. Collar them. Mm -hmm. 
What are these? Incentive. You'll be watched at all times. Stray too far or act suspiciously, and we will administer a rather painful shock. Stop. Keep away from that one. The champion of Eorzea is not so easily cowed. Even if he allowed himself to be collared, the shock would be no more than an itch. No. If he refuses to obey, we will activate the twins' restraints instead. You needn't worry about us. We'll forget we're even wearing them soon enough. Even now, you still... <sighs> Why go to such lengths? What is it all for? Actually, rather poetic. I want to say that one. He'll make be like, eh, whatever, but it's quite eloquent. Oh no, that's okay, dude. I didn't really say much. I just said like, kind of want to like build bigger things, but if I build them piece by piece, you know, I might be able to accomplish something. <laughs> Are a curious one. A far cry from the merciless barbarian others paint you to be. You will be their warden. Take them away. <laughs> yes, sir. I actually don't know how long you stick around for these streams. I know I don't really stream as consistently as other big names, but most of mine are like on the weekends, closer to the evening, or absolutely in the later part of the evening. But uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in, Will. You're like one of the most you know, consistent stream uh, viewers that I have. <laughs> fix. <laughs> Should tune into your strings. When do you what 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 days and what times do you normally stream? I'd like to check them out. I know you play more retro style stuff, but uh, I do have a curiosity for those. <laughs> Actually, speaking of retro, um, oh my god, everyone like in my Final Fantasy group that I'm on on Facebook has been chatting up a uh, remastered version of Chrono, is it Chrono Cross? Chrono Trigger? I think it was Chrono Trigger. I don't remember. But I I know that that's one of the, like, the greatest uh, series 
uh, art JRPGs, so I was curious about playing it. Um, do you know anything about Chrono, Cro Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross, and uh, which one to start with first, or like, do I have to go chrono chronologically? Let me know, cause I I, I do want to try that, and uh, yeah, I might I might want to stream that too. <laughs> Trigger is the shit, so I've heard. Chrono Cross is hot garbage. Okay. <laughs> what what what's uh what's so bad about it? If you don't mind me asking, I want to know like what your opinion is, because these are things that I'd like to like hear before I I, I get into it. I mean, it it sets. An idea in my head but like I engage it to find out if that opinion is like something I would agree with or if I end up like liking it because uh, I've played games that people hated and I absolutely loved and then I've played games that I hated and everybody else is like blown away by Is it still worth playing? Um, is what I like to know. I mean, it might it might be hot garbage, but I'd still like to know if it's uh, if it's a good game to play. Sometimes the gameplay itself is trumps the story.
visited, give it a second chance. I will say though, the Steam translation is trash. So don't play the Steam version. to get the game legally to play it. buy the game and download the SNES ROM and patch translation. Translation, okay. Nice. Like it's a fan translation?
check out six. I know you showed me where to get it. Thank you. Or I think you said send it to me. Thank you. Um, but I'm curious to play it on Steam. I just don't know if I want to play or uh, pay the full price tag on it right now because for such a you know old title, just appropriately tweaked.
Okay, and back. Sorry, I ended up having a conversation with my wife in the, in the hallway. Actually, I did save it on my wish list, so if I do see a sale on it, five bucks is probably where I, I'd settle for. So we'll see. We will have to wait and see. game that everyone seemed to love and praise once it was fixed up, but I did not like, was Cyberpunk. Uh, I just did not feel it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get hit, some hate from that, but uh, it's the truth, I did not like it. Looked interesting. Tabletop uh, game of Cyberpunk? I didn't know there was one. So we just stayed in the classroom and our teacher just like, you know, let us play a bunch of like board games, checkers and whatever. And some kids brought in like their Dungeons and Dragons tabletop set or whatever. And they asked the teacher if they could use the TV. And the teacher's like, sure, that's fine. Um, and they had a video for the tabletop game and it kind of like gave them like a good 20 minute 
play time and then it would like cut to like some event was happening and then they would drop like a big monster piece in the war game and tell them the video would tell them you have to defeat this monster in the next 10 minutes or else you don't get this treasure or whatever but it was all very well set up and I was like I want to play too but I have no idea what the hell's going on there's like six of them all gathered around and I, I missed out on it and I was like I've always wanted to have that little experience, but um, the closest I got was um, maybe about four years ago with a group of friends. They were introducing me to Dungeons and, Dungeons and Dragons. It was fun. It was just a little... Uh, I don't want to say boring. It was just very uneventful because I guess we were just starting out the campaign and I, we didn't really have a lot of free time uh, during the week, so we kind of had to like wait until everyone's schedule s synced up but uh i've been wanting to play more tabletop type games lately um even liz has been interested in playing magic the gathering um yeah just in interesting uh little games that we are trying to get into haven't really found the time to i don't know the gas lens is that another uh tabletop gosh I, I grew up with uh, checkers and monopoly and parcheesi didn't particularly like any of them <laughs> So like, are there like parts that you have to buy specifically for this game, or do you just like go out and mod a Hot Wheels car based on like different parts? It sounds like a lot of work, but I have time to I'd be into that.
Yeah, and uh, I, I see them all the time at Target. I'm like always tempted to grab like very specific ones. <laughs>
turn that down. No, thank you. Let, let, just let me know if there's, you know, if my audio is not balanced. That definitely helps. I take notes too. How to improve. How's the volume now? Thank you. Conversation downstairs. <laughs> Dang. Side note, I think they hit the hey, hit me up on the other stuff though. Yeah, we'll do, dude. I'll uh, I'll be messaging you and uh, we'll we'll coordinate and get some things going. Thanks for tuning in. I'm actually probably gonna end this in the next ten minutes too. I'm just winding down. I just had to pick up another quest so I know where to pick up next time because I might do a a raid here in a minute just to break the story slowness, not me. Thank you. 
But uh, yeah, thanks, man. I'll catch you. I'll catch you later. Tomorrow I won't be streaming. I'm uh, gonna be fixing up the room. So anyway, have a good night. Thank you. finally escaped the watchful gaze of your keepers, have we? Don't react. You'll only draw attention to yourself. Just carry on as you are and listen. After you left with the Garlean lad, Lucia bade a few of us scouts follow you at a discreet distance. We observed you being led into the station, but decided against venturing inside. When you emerged sometime later, and we saw that the twins were sporting Magitek collars, it was clear what had taken place. Now, as quietly as you can, tell me everything. The Legatus himself, eh? Now there's a surprise. This is also the first I've heard of a plan to join forces with the Tenth and storm the Tower of Babel. An interesting development. And perhaps, the opportunity we've been waiting for. Our comrades back at the camp also received some rather promising news. But it's still too early to get our hopes up. For now, keeping yourselves out of harm's way comes before all else. Whatever demands the Garleans make, indulge them. It's <laughs> a good shot of my guy. With luck, this will all be over soon. Until then.
They had not gone far. We searched high and low, but no luck, I'm afraid. I might have guessed you'd be the only one to find anything. I wasn't expecting much to begin with. Eventually, there will be nothing left out here for us to safely salvage. For now, this will have to suffice. We should return to the station. Ah, oh, there you are. Heard you'd gone hunting for ceruleum above ground. Brought back a king's ransom? Hardly. But thanks to these three, we have enough to last a little while longer. Well, well. It's not at all as I was expecting, these ones. For savages, they seem positively docile. Hmm. Uh, it's a poor attempt at humor. In all honesty, I'm grateful for your efforts. But even with another night of warmth, there are those among us who may not live to see the morrow. I trust your expedition was fruitful. Lord Quintus! Use what you procured to refuel the armor. Sir, what about the heaters for the camp? The time for action is upon us. My men and I have matters to discuss. In the meantime, you are to wait here. Do not forget, you are being watched. something requiring their Magitech, given what we just heard. Whether they plan to utilize it now, or after they join with the Tenth, is another question. Will they ever escape this cult? Return to and reclaim the idyllic spaces of which Eulus spoke. Eulus? No, saying Julus this whole time. <laughs> Finished your war, Council. Alphino and Alizea are to stay here as our prisoners. They will be released once your comrades have relinquished their supplies and withdrawn from Garlean soil. Oh, that's bull. Until our terms are met, they will be detained at a separate location. After everything we've said and done, this is how you treat us. Our allies have but limited supplies. They may stave off cold and starvation for a short while, but what then? For now, keeping yourselves out of harm's way comes before all else. Whatever demands the Garleans make, indulge them. <sighs> I hate lying. I also feel like this is the most uh, respectful answer.
Get them out of here.
のさ This is my home. Our home. <laughs> At least it was until that night. I was with Lord Quintus when the capital fell, and thus spared. My family, who did not own a radio, were less fortunate. When dawn came, I made my way here. My parents. My little brother and sister, they were still inside. But they weren't themselves, and they. they、oh, tried to. That sucks. They were tempered, huh? I had promised to take them away from the capital that very morning, to somewhere safe, to hide until the fighting stopped. I promised. Flag bears a chain, the bonds between our countrymen. They're broken. <laughs> a red link at its center, the blood of the fallen, our loved ones who lived and died for Garlemald. But if she too fell, who would be left to remember them and their sacrifice? What enduring proof would there be that they were ever here? If we had turned to your gods, would they have saved us? I'm sorry. Forget I spoke. We should go. No use. Believe me, I do not enjoy being here any more than you. But he wanted us to play along, so that is what we will do. <laughs> Gotta stay closer for warmth. <laughs> It's so cold. Painfully so, unbearably. Hang in there, guys. I've been thinking about what Quintus said about why no one would accept Gali and Rule. Irreconcilable differences, when coexistence isn't an option, only conquest remains. Varus at Gimlet said much the same. Only by uniting the world beneath a single standard would we rid ourselves of the Asians. United, as one people, one race, cleansed of imperfections, a cold and unforgiving vision. And when we fail to live up to their standards, what place is there for us in their world? But the truly sad, truly frustrating thing is how damnably similar it all is to the lofty ideals of Father and the Forum. Non-intervention, always non-intervention. Protect our knowledge and our people, and to hell's with the rest of you. And yet. I can see how it happened. Varus and Father looked to their elders for guidance and took their virtues as their own. But for this world was of their making. In who else could they place their trust? All of us lost in a sea of chaos, searching desperately for purpose and meaning. 
But it shouldn't just be an extension of another's. It has to be ours. It has to be. We all have a stake in this world. No one should be silenced. I won't deny that we lack the experience of people such as Father or Quintus. Perhaps they've come to see the world as a series of problems. And the most efficient way of solving them? To reduce everything to fundamental forms. A stone is a stone. A cloud, a cloud. A flower, no more than that. Simple descriptions that strip the subject of distinguishing characteristics. A man is a man. Divided according to race, creed, or allegiance. And to some, defined by such associations. Is that what you think? In my misbegotten youth, but what I believed wisdom was no more than aggressive ignorance. I've since learned to look beyond the banners and the politics, to see people as individuals with their own hopes and dreams. As for my dream of building a better world, well, every day I'm reminded that it is far more complex than I had ever imagined. But it only spurs me onward, to find the wisdom and the strength to see it through to the very end. All of our supplies and an immediate withdrawal. These are your conditions. Demands. And you forgot about the airship. Once again, you will leave one behind. It will be used to return the prisoners. Their collars will be removed prior to the exchange. So in the end, not even Father's expertly worded rhetoric could deter you from your chosen course. Huh? Not that I thought for a moment that it would. I've no love for violence, of course, but ours is a cause worth fighting for. I just wish he'd realize it too. Sometimes the only way to protect the ones you love is to take a stand. I want you to know I share your conviction. Whether it be on the battlefield or in the debating chamber, I won't back down. I guess what I'm saying is... You've found your own reason to fight. Yes. Yes, I have. God's willing, there will come a day when we can finally lay down our arms and there will be peace. But not until the Telophoroi have been defeated once and for all. And you, brother, will have a vital part to play. By your words and deeds, you'll lead the way. I pray I am up to the task. There'll always be naysayers. Those who think us fools for even trying. It's easy for learned elites to criticize earnest efforts and assert their moral superiority, all without offering alternatives. Not that their sophistry has ever wounded you. So stubborn and strong. Stronger than you even know. Don't ever change, you hear me? If you stumble, I'll be there to catch you. Or give you a thick ear. <laughs> Maybe both, for good measure. <laughs> That's all you can hope for. Thank you, Alice.
The scouts have secured Alizé and Alfino. Their collars were removed without complication as well. Mm. They report no casualties, not for their party nor the guards who will wake from their premature slumber in due course. It would appear the situation has changed. I propose new terms. We have information that will be of great interest to Lord Quintus, and I wish to speak with him in person. No. In the event you rejected our first proposal, we came prepared with a second. Standing guard. More are coming, make ready. We, the loyal soldiers of the First Legion, proud servants of Garlemald, of the fallen Emperor Varis, shall safeguard these lands from the barbarian hordes until our countrymen return. This child may be the worst emissary I have ever seen. We received an urgent communication from the Grand Company of Eorzea. Envoys from the Imperial Army, led by members of the 10th Legion, came to Alamigo and requested an audience. They explained that their efforts to coordinate the reclamation of the capital with the aid of the 4th, 5th, 8th and 12th had ended in failure. Communication between most legions has broken down entirely. Most of the 10th's conscripts have deserted, leaving their forces severely depleted. That is why, unable to continue the fight on their own, they and their allies turned to the Grand Company of Eorzea for aid. Lies! Every word! It is the truth, and I have not finished. The Tenth has requested that we deliver a message to Lord Quintus. Have the ill stand down. You have been listening, my lord? What... what are your orders? <sighs> Inform her... that we will honor the Tenth's decision. Bereft of hope, and now dignity. You just need to get over yourself, dude. I release you from your duty. All of you. I take solace, your radiance, in the knowledge you are not here to witness our debasement. It was a grand, glorious dream we shared. Of a world united, of peace and prosperity. We are ghosts, you and I, memories of days gone by. Bonds forged in blood that I will not see tarnished. Don't do it, you idiot.
Quickly! We have to reach the station before it's too late. If there is still a chance that Quintus will agree to a truce, we must take it. I just hope we get there before he and his men do something rash. Better not. Alright, I'm gonna accept this quest so I know where I'm supposed to start with next time. But, uh... space but I'm kind of excited about the idea of like dual game setup so we'll see anyway thank you Will for tuning in thank you honey for um, playing this in the background while you were doing whatever you were doing um, anybody else who's watching this after the fact uh, take care I will see you later bye